legislature is on the other building figuring out ways to cut the budget to balance it and we will not let them balance the budget on our backs. These services are too important to too many families and individuals in the state of Connecticut. And guess what? These services are a bargain to boot. I think we're here advocating for what is actually the most humane, the most compassionate, and the most cost-effective way to support these people. Yes. Yes. It's one of those rare areas of win-win in government where you act, can actually provide superior service but save money for the taxpayer because most of these community providers are much better run than government and don't have to pay the high salaries that government has to pay. Donald is an excellent example. I mean, a wonderful guy people with Down syndrome get married and have jobs and live in apartments. My apartment's very nice and small, the way I like it, not too big. Uh, we wake up in the morning, we're going to, you know, make ourselves breakfast, prepare foods, we're going to go off to a job. After the job, we're going to come home and just lounge on the lazy boy. We're going to get, uh, have meals, we're going to go out and play baseball, we're going to watch TV, we're going to go to a movie. I cook. My favorite meal is eggplant parmesan. I make that by scratch. Donald is one of the most uh, meticulous people. He demonstrates a lot of traits that I wish all my staff people would have. I do lots of things I love to do, like work, make some money, pay rent, pay new furniture and stuff. Me and my roommate pay half of rent, for like $400 each. I love getting all dressed up, going on dates and stuff. Tell me about your dates. Oh boy. <laughs> this is the good part. Oh yeah. The best uh, place for people with, with developmental disabilities, certainly Down syndrome, to live is in the community with their peers. And therefore we need supports for them in the community and that's what the private providers are all about. So when we're allocating state budget dollars, to provide supports to people with developmental disabilities, we'd like to see those dollars channeled to the private providers. My hope is that if we can't do it in its entirety in the next two years, we can at least start the process of shifting clients over from state employees and state agencies to our phenomenal community provider network. It's the right thing to do. It's about human lives and safety and health, but it also is a, a, a fiscally responsible way to act, that actually by investing these dollars and caring for people in this cost-effective way through private providers, we actually save taxpayers' dollars. So if we do focus our investment and do it the right way, it's a win-win for the people of Connecticut. school. Um, I got to be away from my parents. <laughs> <laughs> my teacher said that I am a hard worker. Of course I do my homework. I do my classwork. She's learning skills that she'll be able to take into the community and have some confidence with. It's one of those building blocks that you put in place. When you support people in the community, you are leveraging all the other assets in the community that everyone else takes advantage of, whether it's police or fire or the grocery store or the other community recreation activities. Think of all the things that we do in the community uh, with our town, with our church, with our schools. When people live in the community, your lives are enriched and in fact supported to some degree by all this other stuff that's going on. Now that's just part of the fabric of society. So if you provide supports in the community, every dollar that you spend supporting someone to live in their community is leveraged by that fabric, and that's what we want to see. They are our neighbors, they are our relatives, and as we're considering all of the budgetary implications up here, we can't forget that. So this is why we need to make sure we're not cutting services to those most in need, but rather being smart about how we do that, and community providers are a huge part of that answer. I've thought about a few things and for my long-term goal, of course I'm living independently, 
I would love to have my own apartment though, but there are some things I would need to work on. It is morally the right thing to do, and secondarily, much less importantly to me, is it is actually much less expensive to the taxpayer to make the person independent. And the other thing too is that by promoting wellness and prevention and by dealing with problems on the front end, we make sure that they don't get worse and then end up costing the taxpayers more for higher levels of care in places like the emergency room, which is where care is the most expensive and people are the sickest. If we don't invest the dollars on the front end, not only do we have human tragedy, but it ends up costing the taxpayers more down the road. I decided to do this video because of course I want to make a difference for people with my disability and of course I also want to make a difference in, in general. Is every day more.